Well, we're here and it's Prime Insights this morning. We have a very big conversation. We're looking at uh, some very interesting thing that has happened uh, some years back and how we've been able to, you know, um, position what uh, we're about to talk about today here on the show. So the Kwame Nkrumah Circle, as we all know as a Circle, simply uh, it's a roundabout and a major transportation hub which is located in the center of Accra. Now, here in Ghana, it's named after Ghana his first president, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. The cycle is one of the busiest and most important intersections in the city, serving as major hub for bus and trotro shared taxi transportation as well. And uh, it's a major destination for shopping, entertainment, and other activities as well. The cycle is large, uh, multi-lane runabout, and that uh, connects several major other roads and highways, including the Kwame Nkrumah Avenue. The this morning, uh, we don't know what you make of it when Kwame Nkrumah Circle is mentioned. Uh, today, we are asking with all the various activities happening at the hub, named after Ghana's first president of the Republic, Osage for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah Circle, is the place now a memorial of dishonor? That's the big question we're asking you this morning. Now, my colleague, Juan has put this together. I want you to take a look at it when we come back. We'll expand the conversation further here on the show. I've got two guests who will be joining me. I introduce you uh, to them when we come back after this. Kwame Nkrumah Circle, named after Ghana's first president. Places like this offer unique insight into the lives and legacies of the people they are named after. They also serve as a reminder of the contributions to society. But what perception do people hold of the place in Chroma Circle? A place where they sell mobile phones and also I heard because of this I shall I run a prostitution. If you have a something and you don't hold it to all, <laughs> then boom, like you won't see it again, yeah. How they swap phone into something else. Exactly yes. You may not be wrong in describing this place as an electronics hub. From phones to laptops to computers, Nkrumah Circle is the surest place to get them. But you may have to be extremely careful in making sure you get value for your money. Auntie AC has been trading here for years. She knows the ins and outs of this place. I am a Tommy credit here. I almost said, Matana Hatcher, me, Momo Subine. I sat down in the middle of you sold to me, Jim. Me credit in the sick up for you. Me, I might say, watch and nobody I am by the same as your answer. Circle is also home to most of the traders here. Most of them do not only work here, they live here, and so do the thieves. From for no more high too much. What to me, yet my bread. I turn so bad, mother. No, my pie will bottom no, I say no. But my pie, my brother, there you know. 850 Ghana City. I want to bottom a cromfire yako. At times, I'm on for sorry, wasting the batteries, Ira, wasting the bat car battery, Ira, wasting the bat car battery, Ira. At times, I'm on your spectacle, crown no more of you. Not everybody who uses Kwame Chroma Circle thinks it's full of miscreants. They describe these views held about Circle and its tiptoe links as a mere perception. Normally, like, they know us to be bad people, but that's not it. You understand? Because they think we are thieves. You understand? Because of the phones we sell and all. And because of the past experience some people have had over here. You understand? You understand? Yeah, but we are not thieves. You understand? Yeah. Most of us do genuine businesses. Circle in your bonnet, sir. See, Momo Fan show me what say. Circle your bonnet, bonnet for no domain, then. Omo, Ben Papa Fon so then. Omo, oh, it's Momo's road circle. Obia, Beko, baby, and I say, Bibia, Bia, Unia, Bia, Ope, Bia, Ope, Atobia, Unia, Bia, Oha. Kwame Nkrumah is the epitome of political excellence. He is the touch bearer of Africa's liberation battles. But the crime, petty theory, congestion, and all the tax associated with Circle and its tiptoe links are a dark reflection of what Kwame Nkrumah really stood for. And yet, I shall phone into the best son, a dean. Was most the son, or who are your whole Circle 
Sanya San Crofoni to Casa Bay, the Yabes San, and your Kwame Kuma Dine Fi Circle there. Sebia Nidina, that's what I say. Now, I say, if you are a parent person being so, Edinia to so they are fine. Oh no, I be a boy circle. I'm a to me and who never be so. And see, a Biana, a bear Kai, a papa, so John Mahamania, obey a Mayana. Hey, who's that? Or also, I overheard no, am I in? Nama so che se ne ma bebre na nkrofo aye nti omo kwhwe details na na so mo komu na mo hesa na esi kona na no be hu se ne omo so jesi afa ba ye ye de ye ka se ye nsesa nkroma din dia na ye ye mistake i think we need to maintain it though because it was named after someone who fought for us police visibility has improved Police personnel can be seen at vantage places providing security for all. Some individuals we spoke to believe the rampant stealing around this area has reduced. Some traders here are calling for more measures to make Kwame Nkrumah circle safer for all. The circle the old folks know is no longer here. The fountain that stood in the middle of the roundabout is dry. Perhaps so has the dignity that should be attached to this place. But Nkrumah and his great legacy live on, whether thieves tiptoe here or not. Juan Nyame and Lois Adeyemi's report for Joy Prime. And that's uh, Juan and Lloyd's uh, uh, beautiful, beautiful work they've put together in regards to the Kwame Nkrumah circle and what has become of it uh, in present day Ghana. I don't know of your take on this conversation as far back as 1971 or 86 or, uh, you know, 17 something. If you were part of that generation, what exactly uh, did that Kwame Nkrumah circle mean to you? And if it was in existence, uh, did we see some of these things we're talking about today happening over there? Now, we've got some reactions on social media. We're going to be reading some of them to you in a moment. But when the Kwame Nkrumah circle uh, began to accommodate more than 84,000 vehicles daily from the arterial routes and its crossroads, uh, the development of the interchange became necessary. Uh, the difficulties of traffic congestion could no longer be effective and efficiently addressed by the existing highways, then gave birth to the Nkroma or Circle Dubai. We'll get into that conversation as well, but uh, well, I'm going to have two guests on the show. Before we get to that, let me read some of your reactions on social media uh, when this uh, document was posted. Now, uh, this one says, Noise Pollution Headquarters. And that's from Lenny Macavo. He thinks that the place has become a Noise Pollution Headquarters. Now, some accounts uh, says that Phone Snatching Headquarters of Ghana, Criminal Center. That's what he also makes of the Kwame Nkrumah circle, which of course has been named after a very great personality. Conker says that phones are snatching. So you can see through that, it looks as if that the phone snatching uh, situation has taken over the place. And uh, if it's not a criminal activity, it's a phone snatching activity. The only one that makes the difference over here with all these uh, three uh, uh, reactions that I've read is the noise pollution so uh can we have more if we do uh let's go through some of them so this one don't fear so says that known for obaha okay so that's what he thinks the place is known for now <laughs> jonathan lazo says that all kinds he put it very simple all kinds another one over here says uh from that consultant says phones what what does that imply phones just phones um, I'm, I'm thinking that it's the same snatching of phones situation. Uh, comrade uh, Chenye Ba says, thieves and frosters. Thieves and frosters. And uh, 2BN uh, uh, Melboy says, uh, 
kwashe. So if you know kwashe, or if you've heard about the word kwashe, and you have no idea what kwashe means, it means that people snatching your phones, at, it could be at gunpoint, it could be, it could be at the knife point, it could be anything that can endanger your life. And so that's what kwashe uh, represents. Now, uh, Yawo says pickups. I'm a little new to that. <laughs> pickups. What is pickups? I don't know. But if you have any idea, you can send it to me. Uh, our social media <laughs> handles are very active. Our WhatsApp line is active. I'll share that with you so you can share your thoughts about the Kwame Nkrumah Circle in present day Ghana with me. Uh, King Solomon says, Accra, Dubai. And then Anna Ose Kofi Bonsu says, 419 zone. 419 zone. Now, Nana says that business center. Uh, he didn't specify what kind of business he's talking about. He says it's business center. Ajwaba says the gallery of thieves. The gallery of thieves. And uh, uh, Anyanko Jata says that. Remember, remember the Nigerian blogger who was interviewed recently by CNN. His comments on Nigerians' visit to families graduation abroad muddied the water. Let your perception of Kwame Nkrumah Circle remain in your head. And hat. So he's just been a bit cautious about the way we project the Kwame Nkrumah circle because he thinks that we have to be more patriotic uh, than, you know, otherwise. But a spade is a spade. Now, Kobe says, uh, Ashao. That's simple. Ashao. Uh, Marcella sends you, says, scam. And uh, Nitaki comes to and says, prostitution center. Prostitution center. So, some very, you know, three or four things have been very evident. I would, I would mention some of them, but uh, Kofi Bilson says fraud, the ultimate experience. All right, I, I like the fact that you added the ultimate experience to it. That actually implies uh, um, um, Joy Prime TV. So now I like that. It means that you're in tune with our tagline. You know, big shout outs to you, Kofi Bilson. Now, th this one is from who? Uh, two fingers in the air. <laughs> and he comes to you and says, I'm convinced. Uh, the prime enjoy prime is a type oh so you were just uh, trying to correct us or something thank you thank you thank you it could be a typo but i'm sure it's been corrected thank you so much two fingers in there uh jd donesk says that phone snatching circle so it's no longer kwame Koma circle but it's phone snatching circle <laughs> abdullah in a few says phone hard and darius lfc says upon some gym that also implies that hell i mean obosan jim is hell so uh, uh, uh that's what he thinks circle has become now uh watch it on what you want to see the shit on in Kwan. how do you guys come about these names on social media watch it one city shit on in Kwan. he says weed boys weed boys and i'm, I'm thinking he's referencing uh weed boys and uh stanley boy he says swapping that i think is also swapping on phones you know uh yeah Aaron Owusu says good question indeed and uh david and mali atibela says smart working smart <laughs> so every single person that circle works very smart right um ion jr says stealing and gabby obrim pong says stealing so these are you know descriptions of comments chroma circle right now from people that uh, shared their views on social media with us. Now, Koku Armstrong says that 419 Center, so 419 Center has appeared twice in this regard. Stealing has come through a couple of times, three or four maybe. Um, Adam Scampton says, shine your eyes. <laughs> and, and that's also another thing you need to know. When you pass by Circle, he wants to tell you that you need to shine your eyes. And shine your eyes, you know, literally means that just open your eyes, be very careful, be diligent, uh, you know, uh, in, w in whatever you're doing over there. Um, Adriz Bev says, Sodom and Gomorrah combined. How did we get there? And uh, SJC uh, Icon for Life says, Ghana, Dubai. <laughs> Marvel says, mobile phone. You can't just say mobile phone. I don't know what that is referencing to. Whether stealing a mobile phone or repairing a mobile phone, it could be anything. Anyway, so these are some of the comments. Do we have any more uh, that we can get into? But you can also share yours with us. I'll tell you briefly how you can do that. Uh, Tuga99 says it's known for successful business. That seems to be the only positive thing that has come through. David Adesok says that uh, shine your eyes again. Uh, Washington Salom says busy area 247. And uh, Bra Hassan says home of smartness. Home of smartness. And that's what uh, he's saying. So 
Um, l let me try and see if I can get through uh, some of the comments uh, as and when we're able to get them. Okay. All right. So those are some of the comments that you sent in. Um, later on, I'll be sharing some intel that we got from, you know, some institutions that we spoke to with regards to this documentary and uh, the place Kwame Nkuma Cycle. I'll share that with you in a bit. But I'm going to go on for now. I'll be speaking to Adib Sani. He's a security analyst, a security expert. He'll be speaking to us on the issue of uh, circle Kwame Kuma circle and also I'll uh, be speaking to uh, teacher Safu Kantanka he's a historian uh, from Menshia Palace he's been very very uh, you know good to us in terms of uh, supporting and contributing to our conversations here on Prime Morning and it's always a good time to have him on the show uh, he's joining us via the phone if you can hear me uh, teacher Safu Kantanka good morning and how are you doing hello good morning Hello, good morning. Hello, are you there? Can you hear me, sir? Hello? Hello, um, teacher Safu Kantaka, can you hear me? If you can hear me, good morning. How are you doing? Yeah, good, good morning. I'm doing well. Great. Thank you so much for the time this morning. We're grateful. Yeah, thank you too. Well, so uh, we're, we're putting a spotlight on Kwame Nkrumah Circle and what it's become of the place today. Uh, we've had some reactions coming through, but historically, uh, what's your first impression when you find yourself at Circle, Kwame Nkrumah Circle, as a historian? Anytime that you're privileged to be around that area, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Well, uh, <clears throat> the immediate uh, thing that comes to mind is the fact that that place has developed. It used to be a small circle named after our president, uh, the first president of Ghana. And it was a historic monument uh, that everybody who got there at least uh, gets the impression of a president, the name of the president, and will therefore delve deep into what actually made uh, that place to be named after the, the first president. And br this brings about uh, a lot of information. So long as you have uh, uh, got a name of a person and wants to delve deep into all that it's about him, it will take you down into history for you to learn more and more about that person these days the place has been so much uh clumsy it's so clumsy it is so congested that uh, it doesn't look like a circle anymore it rather looks uh more complex than that very small circle that was able uh, one could easily um interpret or imagine or uh, fo photograph in one's mind. This very one will take away the, 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 the very interest because as soon as you see it, it's so clumsy that it, the architectural work rather draws your attention more than going into the, the history of the place. This is what impression one gets as soon as one gets to the circle okay so i'm not too sure what necessitated the naming of the place uh the Nkuma circle or Kwame Nkuma circle if there's some history to it maybe you can share with us but um why do nations also in in federance you know name landmarks after people maybe you can share a bit of the history how uh, if he was the one who decided that it's named after him or it was uh, a, a cabinet decision uh, without his knowledge or maybe people just feel like they were supposed to have given that, that name to him so they did uh, and then uh, why nations actually even decide that they want to give names to places like that so sorry i'm not hearing you properly okay so can, I'm, you, I'm, uh, can you hear me now please 
Yes, I can hear you now. Great. So I'm asking, what necessitated the naming of the place? Did he do it himself, if there's a history to it? Uh, did cabinet decide on that? Or it was just an executive decision? Or maybe the people felt that the place was, you know, a representation of him, so it should be named after him. And why do nations even go ahead in naming places uh, after people? Well, the intention of the, uh, of the architects, uh, the intention of the engineers, the intention of the developers was not uh, focused on the fact that they wanted to uh, maybe clean the very history of the place. Uh, they wanted to put up their best so that it would enhance the image of, of that place, which will actually be uh, so beautiful that uh, the name of the person they wanted to uh, project would would come to an open light that was, intention was a very good intention but in the end uh it turned out to rather cover the, the the image of the of the person what is important to do now is to uh, educate people on the issue of of what is happening uh, that is to say uh draw attention to the fact that the place is reserved and is therefore a monument for the first president. Constant education, constant uh, information about it will rather uh, en enhance the image of the place. So that is what has to be done. What has to be done is constant education uh, to people as far as that place is concerned. So that is my suggestion. Uh, it should be in books, children's books. They open the book and then find out, okay, this used to be Kwame Nkrumah uh, circle. This, is, this was the, uh, the, the size of it. This was how it looked like some years back. And now it has been developed to this stage. So if it, it's found in children's books, of course, the... the the, the answer we demand would be uh, given to us. Okay, interesting. Now, um, please hold on for me. Let me get to my next guest, uh, who is also joining us via Zoom. I'll come back to you, uh, uh, Mr. Kantaka. But Adib is a security expert, and he's joining us via Zoom. Uh, if you can hear me, good morning. How are you doing, my brother? Hello, Adib, can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Okay, I, I think I I'm, I'm hearing you now. Hear you. Okay, but can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Great, great. Good morning to you, and thanks for making time with us this morning. I'm most grateful that you're able to join us here on the show. Good morning, KMJ. Great. It's always good to have you. Now, let, let, let me find out from you your thought as well. So, as a Ghanaian uh, and a security analyst, when you get to the Kwame Nkrumah cycle of, of present day, what exactly runs through your mind with all the activities that you see happening there? Well, quite obviously, um, it's, it's a hub, you know. It's a business district. It's a melting pot of activities with a lot of people from diverse backgrounds, with a lot of valuables, with a lot of things to do there. So uh, when you have set a, set a cocktail, you know, you're bound to have challenges with security. So for me, when I get the security, it's my, it's my utmost, you know, concern. Uh, as a result, I, I Put, I immediately activate, uh, you know, certain security protocols to ensure that, you know, nobody takes advantage of me there. So when I'm even walking down the streets, I have a lot of people come my way. I mean, we are iPhone 12, iPhone 13, but I never pay attention to anyone because I've learned to rather deal with the shops. So if there's any challenge, I'll be able to return. 
looking at the purposes it was supposed to have served and the fact that it was named after the very first president of this nation and what you're describing is the situation right now in terms of security. Uh, do you think that it's a bit disappointing that a place like that, a monumental place like that that was supposed to have, you know, um, elevated the, the name and memories of a president, a first president, has turned into what it is right now? Well, I wouldn't be able to say I'm disappointed uh, because, like I indicated, it's a melting pot of, you know, activities with uh, different companies, you know, including international companies having their offices uh, there. Um, it's just, I think, a few people who are hell-bent on dragging the name of the place into this field. And because of the nature, the bustling nature of business in that area, it makes it very conducive for these people who might be coming from elsewhere to engage in their criminality. So I must say, even though on one hand I'm somewhat disappointed, but I'm not fully disappointed just because of the actions of the few. Uh, this phone right here, I don't know if it can be seen. Yeah, so we, we see it. Absolutely. It was stolen. And, um, you know, unfortunately for the thief, he stole it from the wrong person. So I did my, you know, tracking. And it was traced to um, a provisions seller in a certain part of Accra. So when I went there with the police to retrieve the phone, uh, we got him. And according to him, he bought the phone from someone at Circle, someone he doesn't know, someone he cannot... Trace. He doesn't have the person's number. So what do we do at the such you know, circumstance? So we just had to retrieve the phone and, and let him go. So, and some time ago, uh, KMJ, believe it or not, um, a colleague of mine somewhere around the ministries who manned a reception went upstairs to the washroom by the time she came, within like two minutes, by the time she came down, her uh, Apple, you know, MacBook was nowhere to be found. She was very devastated. So immediately, what came to her mind is Circle. And she was like, okay, she has this um, cousin of hers at Circle who sells these gadgets. So let her just call. I said, yeah, just call him. You never know. You know, God is the is the God of wonders. Mm. She called her cousin and told and described the, you know, MacBook to him. So just in case, she's just informing him. KMJ, believe it or not, <laughs> the MacBook was taken to him. Wow. You saw it. Wow, as, as simple as that. As simple as that. That is how she got to him. I was like, wow. God is great. So every stolen was, item goes there. <laughs> Sorry? So every stolen item goes there, or most, if you like. Most End up at seconds. It ends up there. Um, I've, I've had people come to me asking how they can track their laptops and phones because they were stolen. And I tell them, look, if you know anyone at Circle, just talk to the person. You never know. Because mostly when they take it there, there's a ready market for it. Mm. And for these criminals, what they do is when they take it to Circle, they sell it to those other people who would sell it to you and I. They don't sell it directly to, you know, but if they get the opportunity, they are able to do so. And mostly they are into drugs. So a phone that would cost 5,000, he would bring it to you, 200 CDs, he's okay. <laughs> you know, it satisfies his insatiable test mm. for, you know, uh, uh, drugs for, for the day. Uh, so he leaves another day. Um, however, these other people purchase it, then sell, sell it to us. And they have a way of cleaning it up, you know, so you are not able to track it. But there are advanced forms of tracking that is, you know, that we are able to use to uh, locate the phone. Okay. Before I go back to uh, our historian on the line, let, let me find out this from you. Uh, in terms of uh, demographic, uh, where it's situated right now, I, I want you to help us appreciate that aspect of it. Is it contributing to the Western cases of um, robbery, uh, stealing, and uh, in fact, in totality, security uh, uh, in the country, in terms of where it is situated? Well, the thing is, uh, Circle is not only all about gadgets. Okay. okay. There are many other things happening there. I mean, Circle 
it's a good spot for selling criminals who are wanted to hide. Um, Circle has its own socioeconomic uh, challenges uh, with a lot of uh, people living around that enclave, uh, living below the poverty line, and of course have serious human insecurities, which is usually a push factor into you know getting people to go into other forms of crimes, including uh, robberies. Circle has also become a nursery uh, where criminals are trained to a large extent. And that is why I get very concerned seeing children loitering all over the place. And I must also say, based on information I've received in the past, that these children are sometimes even used for courier services, you know, moving drugs from one end to the other, hmm. uh, because they don't easily come under the radar because perhaps they are children. So Circle has become a cacophony of issues that I think uh, need to be addressed because if you sit somewhere at East Ligon or airport residential area and think that it is it is circle and it has nothing to do with me, I'm sorry, we might have to rethink because it is the same people who move from circle at 2 a.m. to these other areas to engage in all forms of crimes. Recently, someone had his motorbike stolen. Uh, when we did the tracking, it, it was stolen somewhere around Ajuringano. When we did the tracking, we found out that it was hidden somewhere around Kukumba Market. Wow. And that is where we went, collaborated with the police, and were able to retrieve the motorbike just before it was transported to Ashaima. So, mm. you know, there are implications, I must say. Mm. That is why it's important that we address these issues. And by the way, my PhD thesis is even on... Uh, uh, this uh, is about um, urban slums and, you know, this is the economic issues that pushes people into crime. Interesting stuff. Now, uh, Tisha Savakantank, if you can hear me, uh, let me let me come back to you. So, uh, with, with the background of all that we've had, um, do you think that um, historically the place is serving the purpose of which it was made to serve in terms of what is happening there now? Hello, this is Africa. Can you hear me? Hello? Okay, I think we're having difficulty uh, trying to reach teacher Safu Kantanka. He's a historian and he's joined us from the Menshia Palace, uh, helping us understand why names uh, are given to places like this and who they are even named after. And uh, we seek to also uh, get some explanation on what, what exactly happens when activities of this nature start happening in other places and uh, what it does to the name of the person that is named after the place. Uh, teacher Safu Kantanka, if you can hear me now. Hello, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, we have you on now. Thank you. Um, I was asking that with the background of all that is happening at Circle right now, do you think that the name uh, that was given to the place has served its purpose? Or uh, it seems to be, you know, um, devaluing the place in terms of the activities uh, that are happening there? You're talking about the banks? Yeah, uh, yeah, we're talking about the activities happening at Circle right now and whether or not it puts value on the personality it was named after or it's uh, taking something away from it. Yes, I, I think uh, the activities going on at the, at the Circle or at the interchange has to be managed and managed well to the standard of... Uh, to international standard. Mm. Reason being that uh, the name of the person attached to the interchange is so uh, uh, great that we don't have to look, uh, get there and le uh, look at something looking like uh, uh, so, uh, uh, a village or though it's a beautiful edifice, but you get there and activities going on there presuppose that we are in a typical village or a lawless uh, uh, country or something of the sort. In which case, great, very many laws and um, <laughs> whatever <laughs> uh, reasons given to all the more reason why that place is so choked, clumsy, ugly uh, must be addressed. We, every 
something has to be done for the place to look like uh, like an international scene. So this is what uh, I suggest, that we have to pay attention to that place. When you go to the airport area, mm. uh, you go there and you see that, okay, it is a very clean environment. It is an orderly environment. What makes us uh, be able to keep that place the way it is, yet unable to keep uh, the the Kwame Nkrumah Circle or the uh, Kwame Nkrumah Interchange in the same vein. So this is uh, special attention has to be paid there. The whole place look like an open market. Why should that be the case? Is it in any way also making um, um, historians, you know, feel that we have not been able to, as a nation, you know, live to the expectations of what maybe Nkrumah would have expected uh, that the place uh, would be used for. And this one I'm talking about Nkrumah personally, uh, looking from afar, what exactly is happening over there? Uh, what was the historian point of view on this? Well, in those days, uh, there were laws and people made sure that the laws worked. It may not be perfect as compared to other areas, but looking back, uh, when we look back in those years, things were orderly. So what makes us, uh, that is what makes us feel with nostalgia uh, what was taking place in those days when the place was called Kwame Nkrumah Circle. Please, uh, I think it is high time we change our views about things. Mm. We have to uh, make make things work. Sorry, I have to be moving uh, around to uh, to make make you hear me. That's fine. Because, uh, yes, because uh, it is not coming through easily, and so so this is what I I feel mm. has to be done. The laws are there. So who is actually taking care of the laws? Mm. Who is making the law work? And why is it not working? Why was it working some years back, but now not working? Okay. So now this is the aspect of history. Uh, and then the, uh, in terms of security, which you're talking about, not a security aspect, but there was order. There was law there was order. And when there is law and order, uh, one feels secured. Where there is no law, there is no order, when things are not working, the place is not secured. So one can say with every degree of certainty that the, the uh, intelligent area of the so-called, uh, the, the area once called Kwame Nkrumah Circle is not in order, it is not um, a, a place where one can call a, a, a secured place. But sir, compared to years back. All right, sir. So I want to find out what made the law work at that time. Was it because it was the fact that Nkrumah was a president when he was named yes, after him? Because and uh, the subsequent whoever broke the law was uh, was punished and punished uh, instantly. So. The fear of uh, sterner punitive measures made people obey rules and regulations. Uh, these days, uh, the laws are there, but who is checking that the laws are working? Nobody does it. Okay. Uh, I'll come back to you and find out a few things uh, with respect to uh, whether or not we're, we're getting to a point where we have to even... Uh, change the name. Uh, we'll, we'll find out that. But uh, the the Amar properties who actually owned the Baj Khalifa in uh, Dubai uh, actually named it after the former president of the United Arab Emirates, which is uh, Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan. Now, if you get to Baj Khalifa, if you've been to Dubai before, you can attest to the fact that in many years to come, that place will still be the way it is. And nobody 
would even attempt to do any business or uh, hawk around the place in any way. Now, the Baj Khalifa can just be equated as, you know, what we have here as the Inkuma Circle. But what's the difference if you look at it from different point of view? That's a food for thought for you. Think about it whilst we continue with the conversation. I'll come back to it in a, in a few. But uh, Adib, let, 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 let's get into this. So at, at this point, where we are seeing all of these things and, and also the fact that the police is making effort in ensuring that, you know, there's some sort of visibility at the place. Uh, do you think it's necessary or it's become necessary for us to protect the image of Nkoma and that's why we're seeing this visibility over there? And is it going to help even in terms of the uh, criminal activities that, you know, seem to be happening over there? Well, well obviously, I wouldn't want to be named after um, a place that is notorious for crime, you know, or any antisocial behavior. So we need to um, maintain well, perhaps restore that legacy because it has become quite an unpalatable name, you know, if anybody mentions Seiko, um, you know, it's, it resonates negatively and that is not how to honor the first, you know, leader of, um, you know, Ghana. So I think um, IGP Dampari has done a great job. Um, now you see police personnel all over the place. Um, but I am tempted to think that these police personnel might be near the people, yet far from them. I'm saying so because to what extent do they interact with traders, with business people, with uh, persons who have just come to transact business and leave, and so it's a transitional space for them. But what I see is either they are directing traffic or they are just seated on their motorbikes or beside their motorbikes observing what is going on. But I think that we need to take it to another, another level by having the police personnel go deep inside the people. What I wish to see are police personnel walking up and down Tito Lane knocking on doors, going into businesses, speaking with business people, what 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 it is, what are what are your menacing security challenges and how can we provide better service to you? But you don't just necessarily have to, you know, have them seated or standing there and looking at the people whilst the people are also looking at them. I don't think that is the way to do it. So in as much as I congratulate the IGP for a good work done on the police visibility thing, which I must say has largely deterred crime. Because once criminals, and in criminology, we call it a rational choice theorem. So before you perpetrate a crime, you are human, you are able to rationalize between the reward and the risk. When there's a more risk or the possibility of you getting caught is higher, you would, you would obviously, you know, be deterred from perpetrating that crime. So the presence of police personnel has deterred crime to a large extent, but has not completely uh, stopped crime in the area because there's still active crime ongoing. And I think um, the police would have to go a bit step further. If you just join us here on the show, this is Prime Insight here on Prime Morning, and we're having a conversation on the Kwame Kuma circle, whether it's becoming a, a, a memorial of honor or a dishonor. And uh, my guest uh, here with me as uh, security expert, Adib Sani, is joining us via Zoom. And we have teacher Savo Kantanka. Uh, he's also a historian from the Menshia Palace, and he's joining us via phone. And we've uh, shared so many things here on the show. We're streaming live on Facebook, so you can join us over there. But I would like to have your thoughts on the conversation we're having this morning. Our WhatsApp line is on your screen, and you can also do so on our social media pages, Joy Prime TV on Facebook is Joy Prime, on uh, Instagram and Twitter is Joy Prime TV. So that's where you can uh, like and share and also uh, contribute to the conversation. If you've uh, experienced anything on toward uh, the Kwame Nkrumah Circle, you want to share that with us as well. What's your, uh, you know, uh, experience? What's your mind when it comes to the Nkrumah Circle? How do you see it today when they mention Kwame Nkrumah Circle? What's the first thing that comes to mind? You want to share that with us here? And what do you think 
we can do to make sure that we uh, protect the honor of the former president, uh, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. You can share that with us over here on the show. If you also uh, do business one way or the other at Circle and you want to share a few things with us here on the show, you can also do the same and uh, we'll be more than glad to hear from you. So now, the Kwame Nkrumah interchange had to undergo uh, a sudden facelift and it was a three-tier interchange uh, which was constructed uh, to replace the Kwame Nkrumah Circle in the center of the city of Accra, Ghana. Now, it was opened in 2016, and uh, the interchange is named in honor of Ghana's first president, who was the leading figure during the country's fight for independence from Britain. Now, both the current and the older edifices remain iconic landmarks of Ghana's capital city, Accra. The construction of the place that was uh, made possible after it was uh, handling over 84,000 vehicles from uh, arterial routes and their uh, intersections daily. And that's how we got to uh, this point. Now, on June 3rd, 2015, a golf workstation near the interchange exploded, killing at least 150 people, and the disaster was exacerbated by flat waters, which also caused the fuel to spread in the floated and burned, killing uh, additional people. So that's very historic incident that actually happened at the Kwame Nkrumah Circle, which is also named after a very important personality in our country. Let me, let me go to um, um, teacher uh, Safu Kantanka. Um, at this stage, we want to know, uh, is it possible that there will come to a time where it will be necessary for us to take the name Kwame Nkrumah from the Kwame Nkrumah Circle? Is, is that a possibility? Hello, sir. Okay, I think we've lost him uh, on the phone. Sorry about that. We'll try to reconnect with him again. And uh, maybe I'd like to pose the same question to uh, Adib in terms of uh, security readings and what has been, you know, um, characterized by the place. Is there a possibility that you think for security reasons, maybe we should just, you know, take the name off and, and replace it with something else? Adib, can you hear me? Changing. I think the chair is on, right? Yeah, we've lost him somehow, and but I want to find out from you as well. Uh, with all these, um, you know, issues that is coming up, in your opinion, as a Ghanaian, you think that it's important for us to respect the image of common command, so it will be necessary for us to change the name. Well, changing the name of the Kwame Nkrumah Circle would be a disaster because it would amount to losing the fight against crime in Accra. So it shouldn't even be on the table. Mm. And, 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 and what, in mm. what ways will, will that, you know, uh, affect? So we are caught between changing the name and putting in place the structures to mm. at least reduce crime to its barest minimum in the area. Absolutely. Um, so the, the name is just like, you know, carving to the criminals. Okay, you've won, you can have it. We're no longer interested. It doesn't have to be that way because it would send wrong signals to other criminal elements in other parts of the country uh, who would think that, oh, okay, if you put on a fight, the possibility of winning the state against the state is high. We wouldn't want to get there. So what I think should be done is for uh, governments, you know, CSOs, uh, development agencies, and other stakeholders to contribute to improving the human security of the area because Circle has become more like an urban uh, slum. And uh, because of joblessness, uh, because of lack of access to basic necessities of life, such as uh, food, water, uh, sanitation, and to, to some extent, shelter. Because any time it rains there, people are kicked out of their homes and they, they sleep in the streets. And even when you get there at night, you see thousands, thousands of men and women and, of course, children sleeping in front of shops and, and all that. It's, it's such an appalling scene. And I think uh, government would have to be up and doing because it has implications on the security of, of the city. So if you fight a uh, robbery, by ensuring the response time is crisp, such that when you are called to a robbery scene, within minutes you get there and catch the robbers, fine, it's good. But it doesn't address the fundamental underlying issue. Okay, so if really we are committed to improving security, we deal with the, we deal with the underlying issues. 
And those are the human insecurities in urban slums, not just circle. You know, Agogloshi, uh, Nima, Newtown, uh, Chokho, and the rest, you know, because a lot of young people there are without jobs, I must say. They lack the opportunities. Education, you know, enrollment is quite low as compared to other parts of the city. And all of these factors is what amounts to, you know, more and more criminals being turned out into the system. Okay, so earlier I, I shared with you about some intel we pegged in terms of the uh, visibility of the Ghana Police Service at Circle. And uh, some actually included a vision that they shared, which uh, is to redeem uh, the lost image of the institution. Also, uh, they intend to, you know, increase uh, uh, more of the personality, uh, pers personnel at the various places around Circle to ensure that uh, they are able to preserve uh, the name of the place as well. So uh, they have a strategy that uh, they put together to ensure that it's achieved and uh, there's going to be more of uh, such, uh, you know, personalities, you know, over there. The NTTD uh, Accra uh, also has their own way of making sure that some of these issues are also tackled. And so they, they deploy the amendments to also go there, uh, the officers to go there and make sure that they're able to, you know, um, help with the situation at Circle at the moment. So, uh, yes, if you've seen them around Circle in motorbikes, just like I did also, uh, you know, uh, explained and what it would make in terms of having them over there uh, and, and, and the security issues over there as well. So uh, those are some of the things that uh, you should know about the uh, police uh, presence at Circle. But uh, let me go to our historian and find out um, if it will be necessary for us to, in a couple of years, change the name of uh, the Nkuma Circle uh, to, or replace it with something else, just so we're able to honor the memory of Kwame Nkuma, especially with what is going on there. Um, uh, teacher, if, if you can hear me now, Teacher Sapakantanga, if you can hear me now. Hello, sir. Can you hear me now, please? Hello. Yeah, so uh, Ali, I wanted to find out from you, uh, before we lost you, uh, if it will be necessary for us to, in the near future, uh, change the name of Kwame Nkuma Circle to something else, maybe replace it with something else because of the kind of activities uh, that seem yeah. to, you know, uh, dishonor his memory. Yes. Uh, I, I don't think, it, in my view, it would be proper to change the name. Uh, what would be proper is to uh, reorganize the place maybe resettle some people, uh, make a, uh, a sure that the laws are working, make sure that there will be no kiosk. We are talking about security. If there are so many kiosks around, what about when people smuggle uh, arms into these kiosks and then use it at night? So what is important is not change of name. The name is so important that it doesn't need to be changed. What needs to be changed is uh, the, the environment and what is taking place in the environment. So um, earlier, you also stated that, you know, we're, we're, we have not been able to really keep the place because of the fact that people are not, you know, um, ab abiding by laws. Um, what's going to be different from here if we're moving forward and we want to, you know, make sure that the right things are done? Is it yes, a presidential uh, and executive know, decision? Uh, people have taken the laws into their hands and are doing their own things. We can compare. We don't need to go abroad to compare our area to uh, outside. What we need to do, just look at the airport area. Who would go to the airport area to uh, to, to, to hawk? Hawking, selling things, uh, building kiosks, and all that. Who will do that? And the law would not allow it. As soon as you start, you'll be stopped immediately. And that is exactly what we have to do within uh, the, the conglomeration of, of the Nkrumah circle, within, say, 800 meters radius. Within 800 meters radius, we don't have to allow uh, uh, freedom people to be free to do whatever they like. Very A well. So, um, okay, so when, when, when you go to um, South Africa, Johannesburg, uh, proud to the status unveiling of uh, Nelson Mandela, 
uh, the square had been actually named uh, Santin Square after the surrounding of the area of Santin. Now, the square was officially renamed Nelson Mandela Square on 31st of March 2004. Now, believe you me, it's in Santin City, but the largest retail complex in Africa is where lies that statue of Nelson Mandela, the former president of South Africa. Now, if you comparatively, you know, uh, put Nelson Mandela's statue, uh, uh, you know, where it is in Southern City to where we have Kwame Nkrumah Square uh, today, present day Ghana, it will be very, very, very. Yes, we can learn from uh, others and then we can improve upon ours. What is what is happening is that uh, uh, earlier, as I told you, that there's no need of change of name. If there was any other name attached to the circle, and then we were going to change it to maybe Nkroma circle or Nkroma overhead, and then improve upon it to make it look like, uh, indeed, it is uh, uh, looking like the person himself. A fitting, yeah. A person's name, wherever it is mentioned, is associated with uh prominence so this is what we have to do we have to keep loss there uh we have to change the face of that place and it can easily be done so that anybody who gets there will know that okay the place is secured and people would uh, refer to the place go to Nkroma interchange and see what is happening there that place is secured that place is neat that place is orderly that people there are law abiding this is all that we have to do. And if we go back to history, uh, the, uh, it is the same everywhere. Places were bad, uh, places were not in order, but places uh, were changed. Those places were changed to be orderly. So, and then we can make reference to uh, the past that, okay, some years back, this place was disorderly. This place was not neat. This place, uh, was cumbersome, but this day uh, uh, we have a new era. So if we have a new era, then we have made history, referring to bad days and referring to good days. Very well. So, uh, Adib, let me come to you now. So uh, I made a comparison with what happens to uh, South Africa with the statue of Nelson Mandela. There's no way you get to that place and find people walking or uh, or social vices and all of that, you know, going on there. You have traveled, you've seen places that have been named after very prominent people, uh, you know, in those countries. And you, you see the difference. Um, is it that we don't really care about security and what it can do to places like that, uh, as what happens here in Ghana, as against what happens in other places, like I've mentioned? Well, I, I agree with you, um, but I think largely it has a lot to do with leadership um, deficiency or failure, uh, because if really um, this means a lot to us, um, it is symbolic, it represents our, our sovereignty, it represents our democracy, our independence, the struggle, the, the, all those who dwelled and, and all that, I think we would have paid a bit more attention to it, you know. In other countries, the laws work, you know, you just don't go and put up a container anywhere. I um, mean, in, in other countries, they pay attention to the human um, insecurities of the people and put in place strategies to address them. In, in other countries, the citizens play a crucial role in recognizing the fact that this belongs to us. It means a lot to us. You know, there's that sense of patriotism. Just yesterday, I was driving behind a taxi driver who was littering. You know, I think he was eating and dropping the leaves on the road, dropping. So I drove up to him. I was like, why are you littering? Why are you doing this? You know, because there's... There's, there's no sense of patriotism. I don't know where it is coming from, but I think that is another this uh, uh, topic. So if we are able to address these issues, I'm, I'm pretty sure that, you know, we we'll, would we'll, we'll pay more attention to it and ensure that it looks beautiful more than even it is. And perhaps, who knows, tourists might even come around, you know. So you can imagine if it had not been turned into Dubai, you know, they call it Circle Dubai. 
what would have become of the place today? You know, I'm sure it would have been um, a destination that many would not even want to go. You know, anytime you tell someone you are going to circle, it's like you are going to Afghanistan or a war zone to return. Yeah. Why does it have to be so? Why does it have to be so? You know, a, a friend, you know, on campus when we're at Legion, at the point we rented somewhere around Cap Price. And I was living with some friends there. One day, one of uh, my friends stepped out. And according to him, he saw some boys he wasn't so comfortable with. So you know what he did? He removed his shirt, put it over his shoulder, and started thug. <laughs> you know, it's funny, you know. He, he turned uh, himself uh, into a thug. You know, he started <laughs> walking towards them, like he's part of them. Yeah. You know, just to, to be part of them, they don't think score free. He's, <laughs> just so they don't think it's different. You know, and I remember some time ago, you know, my first days going to circle, I went with um, a nephew of mine, and when we went to the phone dealers, I go like, excuse me, sir, how much does this cost? And my nephew was like, you know, Adi, do me a favor. I was like, what? Just shut up. Don't talk again. That's not how to do it here. They, they, they don't entertain English speakers here. <laughs> and some Speak would like even pack their car away. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even bring their cars near the place and look very normal just because of the negative connotations of that place. And I think it's unfortunate and doesn't have to be so. <laughs> very interesting uh, revelation there. But uh, let, me, let, me, let me try and wrap up with uh, our historian. Uh, 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 Teacher let me find out your personal view on this. If, if Nkrumah were, were alive today, and seeing all the things that, oh, shoot, we lost him uh, on the phone. I wanted to ask him a very last question, and then we'll wrap up with him. But uh, we'll try and get him back. And then uh, whilst we're doing that, let me see if we have got some of your uh, comments coming through. And I want to find out from Adib. So, uh, Adib, now, let's, let's work out this, okay? Okay, so let me get to uh, Teacher Savukan Tanka. I'll come back to Adib to wrap up with him as well. But, uh, sir, if you can hear me... Um, if Nkuma were alive today, uh, seeing all the things that is happening in our circle, um, how will the feeling be like for him? Hello, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm asking. Uh, we're wrapping up, but I'm asking that. If, if Kwame Nkuma were alive today and seeing all Hello, the things that is uh, happening... Hello, still let me move uh, some distance to make it clearer. Okay, please. Uh, whilst okay. he's uh, yes, doing hello. that... Okay, is, is it okay now, please? Yes. Very well. Uh, I wanted to find out from you your personal opinion about this, though. Uh, if Kwame Kuma were, were alive today and seeing all the things that are happening at Circle, I'm sure maybe he might be very old to actually go there, but he will listen to the radio a few times, maybe watch TV a few times and see the kind of activities that are going yeah, on hello. at uh, the place. Please, please ask your question again. Okay, can you hear me now? Is it clear now? Yes, yes. I'm asking that if Nkuma, Dr. Kwame Nkuma were alive today and seeing and hearing all the things that are happening at Nkuma Circle, what would his feeling be like watching and hearing all that? Uh, still not clear, please. Oh, oh no. Now, can you hear me now? Yes, please do, do ask the question again. Okay, so I'm asking that if Dr. Kwame Nkuma were alive today, Seeing and hearing all the things that are happening at Circle, especially the social vices that are ongoing, what would his feeling be like towards that? Uh, yes, you mean uh, if visitors uh, okay, sir. Uh, drop in uh, at, at, at Kwame Nkrumah Circle or Interchange? The so impression? I, I, sir, can, uh, so if you can hear me, I want to find out if Kwame Nkrumah were alive today, all the things that are happening at Circle, especially the social vices, what would his feeling be like towards all that? It's still not very clear. Okay, so, so, so uh, I think we're having difficulty. It, it was a question that I really wanted an answer for, but um, l let's say a very big thank you to uh, what our teacher for joining us this morning. Uh, teacher Safu Kantanka is a historian and uh, he's at Menshia Palace. Thank you so much for the time this morning. We're grateful that you always show up for us when we call. Okay, uh, we're so sorry about that. Uh, we're finding it very difficult to 
you know, have a, a better connection with him. But let, let me let me ramp up with Adib as well. So Adib, uh, before you go, what are the five things, or maybe less, uh, that you'd want to tell anybody as a security expert if the person finds himself or herself at circle, things that a person has to look out for, make sure to make sure that the person is safe at circle. Hey, you're the man. You're the man. You know, <laughs> I wanted to propose that, and um, it's, it's refreshing to have that question come from you. Mm, thank um, you. Before you go to circle, um, I have a trick. I just don't go there looking like a stranger mm -hmm. and um, looking for services. I establish contacts there. Um, you cannot trust anyone, but at least you have to mitigate it. You know, you have to reduce the risk of um, someone to find you. So I established contact with some people. Look, I have contacts at Apostolokai, people I can trust to some extent at Circle. So before I get there, I call them, then they take me around. Because once you get there, they look at your face, they know you are a stranger. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know, so if you have never been to Circle, or you, you're not a person who frequents Circle, make sure you have an acquaintance who would take you wrong? Because you you might go to a shop, and those there don't actually work there, you know. And the next time you come, we go like, we don't know you, or the shop might, might might be long. So deal with people you know and can trust to some extent. Secondly, don't look too different. You know, sometimes I'm in the office, I'm in my jacket, and I'm going to circle. I take it off, relax, or remove the tie. You know, all together. Um, get there and let them understand that, hey, I know what I'm talking about, I know what I want. But sometimes it force things on you. Mm. So you have to stand your ground. Two, don't take too much money. Money that you don't necessarily mean. Don't, don't have it on you. You know, take what you need when you get there. And mostly what we do is to keep money in our wallets and our back pockets. Well, according to <laughs> the experts that no, it's not a good thing to do. You put it in your front pocket. pocket. Or these days, you know, uh, young men also have their pairs, the hoods. Uh, just last week, I had a gift. I'm yet to learn how to, you know, hold the pairs as a man. <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, prepare yourself. <laughs> so, absolutely, and and you have to maintain a great deal of situational and personal awareness. When, when you get there, you know, people might follow you. People might try to pickpocket you. Uh, people might, might try to dupe you and all manner of things. So just maintain that awareness and ensure that um, whatever you're paying for, you receive it, inspect it, make sure. Make sure it is what you ordered, you know, before you pay. Else you would get home and realize it's only a bar of soap. So I think generally we have to exercise a great deal of uh, discretion and not be fooled by some of the offers that might be presented to us when we get there. Absolutely. The infamous bar of soap, uh, which, you know, uh, phone that actually turns out to be a bar of soap. Uh, that has been very well, much one of the things that have happened at Circle. And, well, uh, it couldn't have been much insightful, uh, you know, uh, without you. But uh, we're, we're grateful that you always find time uh, to make it here with us here on the show. Thank you so much, Adib Sani, for joining us this morning here on Prime Insight. Thank you for having me, KMJ. Thank you. It's always a pleasure. And that's uh, Adib Sani. He, is joining us, uh, via, he joined us via Zoom, uh, security expert, sharing some thoughts with us here on the show. Teacher Safo Kantanka, uh, he's a historian, Menshia Palace, he also joined us via phone uh, here on the show. Now, let me get into some of your comments that came through, and then we'll wrap it up for today. Uh, this one says, good morning. Please don't change. It's not good. Uh, please, it means that uh, we shouldn't change the name, uh, the circle name that... <laughs> Well, I don't know about that, but uh, we hope that it doesn't happen. Now, this one says, there's no need for changing of name. The best thing is to rebuild it again. Barbara from Western Region sent in that one. And another one over here says, hi, I'm Cutie uh, in Ghana here. The security agencies, uh, the police to be precise, why don't they care about the, what goes around uh, when you get to Kijetia and they rob you or try to rob you? When you tell the police over there, they will turn their backs on you. Uh, the police needs to do their works well. Uh, that's uh, cutie inside. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm assuming that he sent this from Kumase. 
And uh, uh, this one says uh, Stealing Hub. Okay, so those are some of the names that came out with regards to uh, the whole situation at Circle, the reactions that we had. So let me say a very big thank you to Joanne and Lloyds for putting that uh, beautiful, beautiful work together. The documentary you saw, uh, they put that together. And also uh, the research they put together for this conversation here on the show. And uh, that will be our primary side conversation. But in conclusion, uh, this morning, I want to tell you the Kwame Kuma Circle is a vital transportation hub and a major destination for shopping, entertainment, and other activities here in Accra. No two ways about that. Now, it's a very vibrant, uh, bustling, and culturally rich area that offers uh, something for everyone. And uh, whether you are a local resident or a tourist or a business traveler, it's the place you want to spend some time.